Okay, let's take just a couple of minutes to uh, get caught up uh, narrative-wise here and explain where we're at. I have taken my uh, small angle grinder with the uh, 1.2 millimeter blade. I think uh, I like those a lot better than the 1 16th. They uh, cut cleaner and, and faster uh, than the 1 16th, at least the ones that I've tried. And I've cut about a six inch strip on uh, each of the uh, runs that I need to run with my uh, small metal cutting saw. Usually I use the bigger version of the metal cutting saw, but it's a, a bad neck day today and a bad back back for me, bad back day for me. So uh, holding on to this one is a, a whole lot easier than um, lugging that heavy one around. Uh, the larger saw is, is much quicker. Uh, I think it's a little easier to hold on a straight line, although I'm pretty good at holding straight line with the small one. Uh, it does take some practice, uh, and uh, it, I think it's a lot easier on the saw, but anyway, uh, that is what it is. So I have run uh, about six inches to make the plunge a whole lot gentler on the saw, uh, and it's a lot safer uh, if you go ahead and do that. Uh, obviously, the plunge into the, the metal or wood or whatever you happen to be cutting with is... Uh, is hardest on the saw and the blade, uh, and it can be dangerous. So if you're not used to doing plunge cuts, either in wood or in metal, I would recommend um, just using the angle grinder with the uh, 1.2 or 16, 1.2 millimeter or 6, 1 16th inch blade and uh, work all the way around. As you've seen from the video, uh, it's a, uh, a little bit breezy today. Um, it, it's an easy cut, it just takes some time. So where I can make this cut in probably, uh, I don't know, two minutes uh, with my small saw, the uh, large saw would do it in less than a minute, and the angle grinder is going to take, I, I don't know, seven or eight minutes, maybe even a little bit longer, uh, and you would probably use about half a blade on each one. So uh, nice thing about using the angle grinder is the blades are a lot cheaper, or at least the discs are a lot cheaper. Um, these blades on these saws are... Uh, I don't know, $35, $45, and the battery's off of it in the charge. Uh, $30, $45, and I would suspect that I would be able to do two tanks uh, with one blade, so um, you know the consumable cost is gonna be relatively uh, close there. But uh, it, it, in my opinion, it's a whole lot easier to use the cutoff saw. So that's where we are. And I will go ahead and uh, cut the rest of these out, and we'll start welding on, or at least tacking on, the vertical bands. And then we will look at cutting uh, the corners loose, and then putting the horizontal bands on. So, be right back.
Okay, so we have um, cut the doors, or I have cut the doors. You've just sat and watched. Um, and, and they're just held in place by the little bitty nibs in the corners, probably an eighth inch on either side. So maybe a quarter of an inch of material total holding each of the corners. The next step is to uh, attach the vertical bands. And if you remember, the vertical band doesn't come all the way up to the horizontal line or all the way down, in this case down here. It, it stops an inch. Remember, we're two inch band material, so I've got an inch on this side and an inch on that side of the door. So I will come just shy uh, or exactly an inch uh, from the top there and an inch from the bottom. So I will cut the door bands that, that uh, we've rolled in another video off to the proper length. And remember, I'll have to cut some from one end because it's the very end. Uh, doesn't go completely through the roller, so it's not a perfect radius like the rest of it is. So I'll cut on one end, and then I'll cut the other end to the right length, and I will weld those into place on the door, and I will put a just a very small tack uh, to hold to the tank so that when I cut these corners loose, the door doesn't fall out on me. So then I'll roll the tank up on the... Uh, up on its back side, basically where the doors are facing up. Go ahead and take a sawzall, saws saws all these corners loose, and uh, use my magnet to lift the door out, uh, and that's a lot easier and a lot safer. So at that point, we'll know uh, exactly how well our doors are going to work. I can tell uh, now that these doors are, are perfect. I don't feel any bow at all. Usually, if they're going to bow, you'll get a, um, either a dip or a rise right in here and everything is, is super flat. I'll bring the camera over in a minute and let you see that. So. I think we're going to be good uh, on this tank. Uh, like I said, there's just a, a tank every now and then you get that's got uh, too much stress in it despite everything we've done, and you'll end up with a, uh, a raised area somewhere. But I, I think this one's going to turn out real good for us. So uh, let me get these attached, and I'll come back to uh, cut these corners loose. Okay, so we've got our vertical bands in place, all four of them, uh, and I have gone ahead and put the bevel, the, done the weld prep on each of these bands. So there's a, a bevel on either end to accept the horizontals, and um, of, of course, you know, get the mill scale off so that you can put your three welds here. And I just evenly space those out. They don't have to be anything significant, just uh, a nice stitch weld that looks good. Don't go too far, because uh, remember, we don't want to put any more heat into that door than uh, absolutely necessary. So a nice cold weld, uh, they're as cold as you can get it without uh, distorting that door any at all. Uh, and as a matter of fact, even with these tiny little welds, and I ran them very quick downhill, uh, as, as this thing cools about 10 or 15 minutes into its cooling, you can hear this uh, creak and, and move every now and then. So even just the littlest bit of heat into these panels, um, we'll move them just the tiniest bit and that, that adds up as uh, the more welds you put on there uh, start to add up. So anyway, the, uh, the next step is to cut the doors loose. Now remember we have welded these bands in place and I have tacked them to the tank itself. So once I cut the, the doors loose, they're not coming off, okay? I want them to stay in position uh, while I weld the 
horizontal bands on, the upper and lower horizontal bands. Well, I don't want to have to be dealing with that door shifting around while I'm welding these bands on. I want it to, to stay exactly where it's at. So I go ahead and tack it into place. Now, we will not be putting our hinges on yet because I always run door seal material and that's eighth inch thick. So I will have to uh, cut these little tacks loose, lift the door out of the way, uh, put the hinge material on the underside of the band uh, that will space the door out and then we'll set it back in the hole, make sure it's where we want it to be and uh, then weld our hinges in place. So that's what's coming and um, at this point I'll go ahead and just nib these corners. Now, and this is a good example of, uh, I will have to, I'll have to modify a um, Sawzall, uh, I may have said whole saw earlier, but I'll have to modify a Sawzall blade to uh, get, uh, I'll, actually I have to have to make a shorter one. So I'll take the uh, cutter and cut the back end of this off uh, so that I can get in this small hole and I'll show you what has happened. think that we can see there, uh, my cut comes down to here and I don't have enough room to get the, uh, the Sawzall blade in there. Uh, all of the others had plenty of room, I just for some reason ran that one shorter. Now, something you want to make sure of uh, and absolutely double check and triple check is to make sure that you got all of these corners nibbed loose because if you happen to accidentally leave one in place, um, you'll be climbing in the tank later on with a uh, uh, ziz wheel to uh, cut that loose and, and that's not a lot of fun. So uh, I'll go ahead and modify that blade and so that I can slip down in that shorter hole, cut that loose and then I'll apply the uh, horizontal bands. Okay, so real quick, I've modified uh, one of the blades. Just cut a notch out of it, made this part thinner. It's, uh, I would like to have not gone all the way up there because that's gonna be a weak point. But anyway, it's gonna be fine for what we want as long as, uh, as, long as I don't overstress it, we should be fine. horizontal bands on the top and the bottom and I have gone ahead and uh, nibbed the little tacks loose. Uh, I tacked it all the way um, in three spots across the bottom because when you put these welds in right here, if you don't have it tacked down right here, it'll want to pull that uh, door band material up. So just tack it in place, tiny little tack, just enough to hold it down so that uh, your weld doesn't pull it up, otherwise it will. So let me uh, get the magnet and we'll lift that up.
All right, so we get in it, get a look for the first time at the uh, inside of our tank. And that's a pretty good looking tank. I like that. Uh, got real lucky, the soap cleaned it out real good. The uh, uh, dishwashing soap cleaned it out real good so I don't have any more captain goo in there. I'll bring the camera over so that we can see that. There we go. So uh, it's nice and clean inside, which is uh, kind of refreshing to have one that clean. And um, I will go ahead and, and sand all of these off real good, uh, grind them with a sanding disc, and go ahead and pull the other door off. Uh, and then what we'll do next is put our door seal material on, apply our hinges, and uh, we'll be off to the races. <laughs> 